Hey folks, Animata here. It is the January 14th weekly reset for 2020. So as you know, with the dawning wrapping up, we no longer have Ava Levante in the tower and you probably lost all of your ingredients and your little oven as well for cooking those treats. But as with every week, we have the Vanguard, we have the Crucible, the Gunsmith, and we also have the Gambit weekly rewards or the challenges in the tower for a powerful tier one gear reward for handing in eight bounties for each of those we also have the clan rewards which is doing or gaining 5,000 experience for your clan and you've got a powerful tier two gear reward across three characters all of these are across all three characters if you have them so you can maximize your chances if you want to the flashpoint this week takes place on the tangled shore so you can go over to the spider do some activities all over the Tangled Shore, including the daily rotating heroic adventure, which actually has some pretty unique loot. If you've got Forsaken, you'll probably grab some of these and get access to some really cool pieces of armor, such as helmets and chest pieces. But anyway, once you've handed all these in, you can get a powerful tier one gear award. For well, those of us like Crucible this week, we have Clash, and we have Breakthrough as our Rotator matches. Doing four of these across these two will get you a powerful tier one gear award. And then if we go down a row, we have all of our core matches. We got Rumble, we got Control, Elimination, Survival and Survival Freelance, and also including Classic Mix. Doing four of these across this whole group, you can potentially get an upgrade of a powerful tier one gear award once you complete them. Not potentially, but you will. In Vanguard this week, if you are doing your weekly strikes, you need to do three of these. The little challenge below is half right. Just ignore the part where it says bounties completed. So just read the top part where it says complete strikes using the same subclass element as currently active elemental burn, which this week is going to be solar. You need to run three of these with a solar subclass, such as a solar titan or a solar warlock. Run three of them with that solar subclass and you will get a powerful tier run gear award. Then we jump over to the ordeal. This one this week is located in the Pyramidian. So what you can do is as you go up all of these ranks, you will get more points. So the first one, what you need to do is you need to do five runs to get a powerful tier one gear award at the base level. And that is adept. But if you go all the way down to master, you just need to do one completion and you'll get that gear award right off the bat. So also with this, if you can get a 100,000 score from I would probably be able to do it easily in Legend or Master. You can do it in Heroic if you're uh, kind of just really going hard. But if you're doing a Legend or Master, it's easier. You will get a Pinnacle Reward, which is a 2 plus piece of armor or weapon upgrade. But anyway, as with always, all these modifiers will increase in amount based on the difficulty you choose. So if we go over Master this week, we have Shocker. When defeated, Goblins spawn arc pools that causes damage over time. We also have champions with overload, so make sure you take those overload mods so you can overload them and kind of stun them. We also got champions with barriers, so taking those barrier mods from your seasonal artifact and you can break those barriers down. Remember to feather your shot so that way you're not wasting all your ammo and you can actually burn through their shield without them restoring their health. You've also got equipment locked. Change everything. Make sure you fix all your armor set and your weapons and everything, even your perks, if you have to select anything before you jump into the Nightfall, if it has this perk or mod on, as you won't actually be able to change anything once you're in. That includes the shaders, as I always say. Match game. What you need to do here is you need to match the element of your weapon or your subclass abilities or subclass super with the actual elemental shield. So if there's a, I guess this time it's going to be Vex. So if there's a Vex uh, Minotaur with a shield, you need to make sure that you match up your weapon. Say it's Arc, you need to match it up with an Arc weapon to pop that shield. Otherwise, it's going to do very minimal damage. We have Chafe. Radar is disabled. We got more of those champion mobs as well. And then we finally have the Genesis algorithm. Incoming void and environmental damage is increased. For Legacy Nightfalls, there is no special challenge. However, you can get some rare drops from the final boss and chest. This includes for the Garden World this week. This has a chance of dropping the Universal Wave Function ship. It's an exotic ship. It looks pretty cool. We also have Tree of Probabilities, which has the potential drop of the DFA hand cannon. This was the Curse of Osiris hand cannon. Maybe it's decent. Not too sure. 
We also have the Corrupted Strike. You can get the Horror's Least Pulse Rifle as a potential drop from this one. This one is likely to have random rolls as well. Alright, this week on Mercury, we actually have a new quest you can get from Osiris, which allows you to put in some pretty cool codes and get some lore pieces, and it may even be leading to something bigger. Some people think it may be an exotic quest, but if you have the season pass, make sure you jump in here and get the quest done, and also the other quests if you haven't as well. You can also do the Sundar runs, doing multiple of these, and you're killing the enforcers or flayers, flayers will also give you more progress in this, you will get a powerful tier two gear reward, as well as some generated polarized fractaline. In Gambit this week, well, the things we have rolling is just your standard Gambit standard matches, or your prime matches, combine the two, get three of them completed, and you'll get a powerful tier two reward as well from that. As well as the Reckoning this week, well we have the likeness of Oryx rolling and the potential drops from the Reckoning here are the Spare Rations Hand Cannon, Outlast Pulse Rifle, Bug Out Bag Submachine Gun, and then on Tier 3 you can potentially get the Gnawing Hunger Auto Rifle and Doomsday Grenade Launcher. For Shadowkeep owners on the moon this week, we got your usual, so if you want your pinnacles, you're going up to the Garden of Salvation, you're running that with five other people, as is going to be next to impossible to do it solo, unless you're a really pro player that has all the secrets. Anyway, completing this, you will probably get multiple pinnacle gear rewards, but you definitely get one at the end. And then you've also got the Pit of Heresy. If you can match that up with the Xenophage exotic weapon quest, you can definitely come out some good rewards, including a pinnacle gear reward. Then we're going to go down to the bottom. We have the, uh, I'm going to start with Eris here. Luna's Calling. So if you can complete this quest, you will get a powerful tier one gear reward. And also with the Lectern, if you defeat 30 Nightmares in Soros Harbor, you'll also get a pinnacle tier one gear reward. But you want to match this up with Older Osoro so you can get some extra weapons out of this also. We've also got the story mission for the week for another tier one. And this is just going to be completing that mission and getting that reward. Then we're going to jump up to the Nightmare Hunts. Similar to the Nightfalls, completing these multiple times will get you a powerful tier 1 gear reward. And also, if you can complete it on the hardest difficulty, you will get a pinnacle gear reward. So, as with Nightfalls, multiple difficulties, highest difficulty will get you the most mods. Again, we have Empath. This one, I believe this one is just a st standard for Tanix here. So, with this Tanix one, Enhanced Radar. And we're also going to take Increased Damage from Melee. We have Unstoppable Champions. Make sure you got that mod. We've got Barrier Champions. We have Chafe. So even though our Enhanced Radar is here, we also have Radar Disabled. We have Mobs, Extra Champions. we got Equipment Locked, Match Game, Match Up Those Elements. And we also got Torment of Tannic, Solar and Environmental Damage is increased. Then if we jump down here, we got Zidron, the Gate Lord. So this one is actually similar to the current Nightfall. So we will have the Shocker where Goblins will spawn Arc Pools. Every other mod here is the same. We also have Torment of Zidron, Avoid and Aerial Damage is increased. And then finally, we have Kells. We've got here... Golas. <laughs> this is all going to be the same. We've got the, the Empath one. All these are the same. We also have Torment of Skolas. Solar and Environmental Damage is increased. So that is the moon for this week. Now on Mars this week, we have Escalation Protocol as usual. So if you're going over to here or here, you're going to be farming those weapons. So this week, all three will drop the shotgun, the submachine gun, and the sniper rifle. The hand cannon is a unique to the storyline. Everyone gets that. It's not a rare drop. But the other three, big rare drops here. They are very, very rare. There is no specific way to do it. Just defeat the boss at the end of the seventh wave. There is nothing about putting any armor pieces on or having any certain items. You just have bad luck if you're not having it dropping. And uh, it's, it's just a coincidence that you've got something in your inventory at the same time. But anyway, just keep at it and you'll have those drop. And you can also get some armor dropping from the chest. No longer needs a key for those. So this week on Nessus, well, we have the Menagerie. I have done a guide for that. You can catch it in the top right if you want to unlock this. But anyway, you have your standard match made menagerie and you can also jump into heroic and this is going to have extinguished. So if everyone dies, everyone is returned to orbit. No questions asked. Match game, match up those elements. Attrition. So your regeneration is pretty terrible. And if you defeat an enemy, they've got a chance of dropping a well of light. Stand in the well of light and you will get your regeneration back. Arc singe as well. Make sure you take in any arc weapons to take care of the enemies and maybe some resistance. 
Also, the Hydra is the boss this week. And then, as a few people have asked in the past, we have the Eververse offerings. So we can get the Galloping Knight multiplayer remote for 1,200 silver. You can have a quick look at that one here. It is multiplayer, it's two people that need to be used for this one. And then we have the Ain't My First Rodeo Weapon Ornament for the Chaperone. This is 700 silver, it's very woody style. Then we've also got the Saints Invocation Ship for 800 silver. That's actually very cool. I really like that one. Really cool. We've got the Tip of the Spear Vehicle. It's a Sparrow for 800 silver. There you go. Another really cool looking one. Oof, check that out. We have the Up in Smoke. People that are into hip hop and rap. Here we go. We've got this Transmat effect. There you go. And then we've got our Fond Memories Engram. Then for Bright Dust, we have the Grayscale Undergrowth for 40 Bright Dust. Very grayscale. I mean, that's in the title, right? Then we've got the Cabal Shieldbreaker Transmat Effect for 450 of the Bright Dust. There's that one there. We have Traitor Primus Shell for 2,850 Bright Dust. I actually just picked up this one. It looks really cool. But this one has... Omni Telemetry, I don't really have a use for that. We got Public Defender as well, and also Random Potential Chance. I think mine ended up being like Mars or something. And then we got the Abyssal Scream for the Tractor Cannon. My partner picked up this one today. She uh, really likes the style of that one. Really bone claw style looking. Really hive looking actually. Then for the Bright Dust, well, we've got the Shake It Out Emote for 700 Bright Dust. There you go. I'm guessing that's like a Taylor Swift thing or something like that. Then we have, again, the Trader Primus Shell for 2,850. We've got the Ash Angel Sparrow for 2,500 Bright Dust. There you go. It's a red rocket. <laughs> I'm really, really um, using this Bogosian Night one, aren't I? Anyway, uh, we also have the Credence Ornament for the Trust Hand Cannon. There you go. Fancy looking. That one is going to be 700 Bright Dust. Again, Abyssal Scream, 1,250 Bright Dust. We have the class specific gauntlet for 1200. This is the Titan one. Really, uh, really cool looking Omelon one. And then finally, we have the Red Legion projection for your ghost shell if you want to pick that up and uh, waste your bright dust. It is 1500. It's pretty uh, ridiculous how expensive those are. We have the World of Brass shader for 400 of your bright dusty boys. There you go. That's actually pretty cool, that one. We have Chit and Slate. This is actually one of my favorite ones, to be honest. This is 40 Bright Dust. It's literally the one I actually have on right now. Then we have the Box of Tricks Transmat Effect for 450 Bright Dust. If you want to, uh, you know, think outside the box, this is what you do. And then we have the Triumphant Projection Ghost Shell. I think this was from, uh, I don't know what that icon is. Is that like the Dawning? That one's for 1,500 Bright Dust. Must have got that last year from the... Um, the bright engrams or something like that so those are all of the eververse options for this week all right there we go that is the weekly update for this week i apologize for it being late we have had uh some pretty dire air situations here in victoria with the bushfires i have been doing streams for those pretty much every stream i've been doing has had a focus on the raising of charity for the red cross australia so do check that out if you're interested in jumping in or at least seeing the special challenges people are putting onto me with their donations otherwise i will catch you next week for this kind of video hope you have a great one i'll catch you later bye